The Go to Conway is back, Big Pippin. It's your main man, Master So here, leader of the Master Knights of the Round Table. Upcoming one, subscribe to the Spin Move. And season four is here. Alongside the quick recap of the previous season, we are very much focusing on Ogata, which I believe is the right move to make, first and foremost. Ogata is a problem. This man tried to kill Sugimoto. This man tried to kill Ashiba. This man sucks. But we do have some fond moments with this guy. Always was on the bullshit underneath the table. But now that has come to the front and he was stopped. However, Ashiba was a brother that's about to kill him. And since Tsukimoto could have that, he survived. Narrowly escaping. And now he's on the run. Or is he? Because the whole team expects to see him back. And while my explanation of the recap was longer than the recap does now, it very much is going to be a driving point for this entire series, if not the first episode. Because he almost got shot next to this dude. Now the whole thing with the sniper I thought was a very well play on and was, was on the previous events. Because you know he was trying to go after Ogata like everybody else is going after Ogata. But, he's seen us with the bastard. Also you want to roll with the fuck boy? You get shot too. Birds of a feather go down together. Except no! Sukimoto's tired of getting shot, y'all. Shirashi should be tired of it too. Ain't you the escape king? Can't escape a bullet Monday? That's not even fair. But, <laughs> but Shirashi was shot and let everybody stuck down. All that shit. Sukimoto was out there buying some miso. Rolled around the buildings and got that dude. Now the conversation, or lack of, that these two guys had was actually pretty nice. Because, you know, the whole thing with the fishes and stuff like that, and the biggest thing of communication would take it over to his face and just punching it. Putting the fist down on it, drop them bowls on it. They even stepped. Okay, they didn't do all that. I would have. And not even the enemy of my enemy is my friend thing, even though he is following them. But, you know, this coming to an understanding. Now, I don't really think much of the moment where Sugimoto was talking about seeing him younger self and feeling that inner child when it comes with Asapha and Asapha listening over to it. To me, after three seasons, I don't really feel much from a moment like that anymore, but it is rare to take note that these two have been separated for the entirety of season 3. Which brings me to the opening. Dope ass opening first and foremost and I was not expecting the all English opening. Brain base you're making some good decisions. I love Gino's but you don't do? Mm -hmm. Now just the opening lyric. <laughs> I just put it like this. A legitimate romance between these two would be dumb as hell. Let's not even talk about the age gap. It's just not what this show is about. Unless it's like Tanaki or Tanaki, excuse me bro. Unless you're him going out to Incomat just for a second round of ass, I'm all for it. Even the big bull dude that, you know, was after that prostitute. Get it how you live. But Suki Moto and Asipa, mm -mm, that's, that's, that's not even. That's just not what this series is about. Speaking of the opening though, they did a lot of shout outs or attention to Chen Sumi. To be fair, that's my boy. And he was actually referenced a lot. But that, you know what? He's referenced a lot throughout this entire show. What am I talking about? I was going to get into, like, you know, they talked about him a lot for him not to be in the first episode. He's not even a focus of what's going on right now. But we got swerved two times in season three, like that one big ass flashback where it ended up being him. Or the other time where these guys was all working. Dude, this guy got out. He's not, he's, not, he's not even ops. Well, it's not his op. So he's assuming it's the shit. Now, in regards to the second half of the episode, the whole thing going on with Hishitaka, the white-haired Japanese man hanging out with the big bull, he was defeated. What? Well, he was captured. I don't mean, the fight was off stream. We don't really know how that happened. And the guy that they went after, I ain't gonna lie, my memory's a little bit fuzzy there. But when it comes to the conversation that they had, they said that he said that good luck before it gives his fortune to people doing the right moves. I don't believe that. But my feelings aside, we also give our attention to the other character. His name was all over and I forget it already. I'm sorry. Kanano Barrett, Kanan Bob. The asshole picker. This guy's introduction was trying to tell us that he was looking at the dude's ass. I know the wrinkles of that asshole better than I know his face. It fits right into Golden Comedy, don't it? And it's interesting how this guy said in the air that he has terrible luck. Like, his luck just his entire life. When he dropped those fish, slipped on his ass for no fucking reason. Well, it's ice. 
and just lost everything he was just talking about. Then, having that being said, after the guy has had his conversation with Higgy Taka talk about that good luck, good fortune, favors, the peace, who's right. While it's difficult to actually pinpoint a villain or hero in these circumstances, especially in this show, it kind of just feels like a bad omen. And we shouldn't fuck around with this guy. Maybe a guy making a living or picking into dudes' asses isn't somebody that you want around like that. But we are still in the early stages of that, so I'm going to let him plead his case on his own. However, all these to say, this was a very good comeback for this series. I very much enjoyed the episode, especially the first half, because I feel like we were just right back at it. And just once again, knowing that we spent most of season three separated into different parts, and now the crew is back together, or whoever remains to the crew. Pretty good start. Back into that Golden Comic greatness, back into that Golden Comic feel, back with the whole Golden Comic cast doing the things they do. The Immortal Sugimoto would not be shot down. By the way, it was kind of funny when he grabbed the sniper shirt and started stabbing at the wall. <laughs> he was stabbing repeatedly trying to find that dude, like, where is he at? I just thought that was funny. But yeah, man, go to comment season four. First impressions, damn good. Let's keep it moving. If you watch this video, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Like this video for me, and I will see y'all. Peace out. Subscribe again to the spin move. Mm -hmm.